Hey guys, Pixel here. I recently picked up both a Pixel 4 XL and a Pixel 6 Pro, and I've had a lot to say about Android 12. So much, in fact, that I've had to split that section into its own video. So here it is, here's my review of Android 12 with the Pixels. I know the Android 12 update is a bit controversial on the Android subreddit, but personally I absolutely love it. It's the refresh Android has needed for years. The first main thing that stands out to me personally are all the animations. Animation quality on Android is something that's always been lacking. I know LG and Samsung have tried to improve it with mixed results at times, but Android 12 makes a massive stride in making the user interface more fun to use, starting with the lock screen. The clock gets thicker when going from the ambient display to the regular display, and moves back from its OLED pixel shift location to the proper one. It looks lovely. Then, when you unlock your phone, you get a thick line going down the screen, which also looks lovely. Then, when you lock your phone, the screen fades to black, like the display is being sucked into the power button. It's not just about the animations, but it's also about how well integrated into the operating system they feel. An animation for something like unlocking a screen or going into an app should then be reversed for locking a screen or exiting the app. I also like how the OS feels bouncy. Swipe down on the notification screen and watch your notifications bounce from the resistance. Swipe down once more and the brightness bar will open itself. Get to the end of a list and the screen will stretch like on an iPhone. The problem is, while Google has given these UX extensions, most app devs just don't care. An example of a bad app is Twitter, which still opens new tweets as a separate activity, which feels disjointed. WhatsApp at least uses zoom in animation, which makes it feel like you're entering a conversation thread, and Telegram just uses the same animations as on iOS. The third party app experience still somewhat makes Android feel worse to use. Twitter, again, the pictures are huge and it's hard to tell where a tweet starts and ends, and it just makes me feel overwhelmed. TikTok still doesn't have a dark mode on Android, although it seems to handle notifications better than iOS in my experience. The official Reddit client is mediocre, and I haven't found a client as good as Apollo on Android, until very recently. Reddit Sync uses Material U beautifully, and has the creature comforts I want, such as being able to send Reddit posts as images. Thankfully, Snapchat and Instagram are both well adjusted on the Pixel, with the 6 Pro receiving extra features I'll speak about later on in this video. While owning the 4XL and the 6, it has felt like the experiences have been improving, which is great to see. TikTok, for example, no longer massively drains my battery, although some apps, such as Plex, run absolutely terribly on Android. These sorts of apps cheapen the experience, which is a shame, since the car OS feels so solid and so high quality. Still, it's nice that most apps know when to post background media when they want to take priority, so like I said, apps are improving. I really like Android 12's visual styling, I like these big bubbly buttons. I like how there's no transparency in the background of the notification screen, so you can focus on your notifications. I also love the fact that the colors change depending on the wallpaper. That's what Material U is about, it really does make it feel more personal. Google knows that they have an edge with customizability with Android that iOS just does not have and they've used it well here. I'm not really a widget user, but I like how finally the widgets have been reamped. No longer does it feel like every app is doing its own thing, and it has also helped to update some apps that have been using out of date design cues. Android widgets take the edge of iOS with having wacky and zany frames for their apps, again making their device feel more personal. You can even change the way the icons look, however only with the Google icons so that feels pretty disjointed still. I also like how the Pixel Launcher lets you use a spotlight, searching for apps, settings and on Google. I also like how I can use my phone as a TV remote for my Google TV, which is great because I always seem to lose my remote in my bed. I find it interesting, instead of a battery percentage, you get an estimated time remaining, which I actually quite like. Although with the Pixel 6, the drain is so random this feature basically doesn't work. I like how with Android 12, apps have their own splash screens, but they're not always just a static icon. YouTube for example has a nice animation, one that isn't found on iOS. And same with Keep, Twitter and Snapchat, which all have some sort of a screen clean effect. The problem is, even the Pixel 4 XL, which is a 2 year old phone, is too fast for all the animations to finish. And in terms of Pixel exclusive software features, now playing is a really cool addition. It's like having Shazam always on. In terms of how well it picks up songs, well if the song is popular or has been playing on the radio, it will get picked up. It also picks up some slightly more obscure pop stars, say Sandra or Modern Talking. But if you swear from anything mainstream or popular, it won't pick it up, usually. You can add a button on the lock screen that searches online for songs, which picks up basically every song. Last few things about the OS. I like how the Alarm Clock app works with YouTube Music and Spotify. And of course, you can change the snooze duration. Ahem, <coughs> Apple. Sleep Cycle also works well with Android's bedtime mode, putting your phone into a do not disturb state, where the always on display turns off, and also adaptive charging then turns on. The Pixel exclusive notification sounds and ringtones are great, and you get a large selection of them, even if most people won't bother with changing it from the default. The newer ringtones work alongside the updated Taptic motor on the Pixel 6 Pro, meaning that the phone buzzes to the beat of the ringtone, like on iOS. The Pixel wallpapers are nice too, and Google has poured over all the previous Pixel wallpapers, which means I get to use my favourite, the Earth one. 
Also, I like how easy it is to put your phone into silent mode. iPhones don't have that, you can have it on vibrate or do not disturb, but if you want to silence it, you have to turn off all haptic feedback. I also appreciate being able to flip the phone over to put it into do not disturb. There are some other general things I like about Android. I missed apps being able to do things in the background, and the Pixel ROM, for the most part, seems to be good at closing inactive apps, although I did need to put a few into restricted battery mode, including TikTok. The only thing I wish that the Pixel ROM did better was handling music and video. Both Samsung Gallery and the iOS Gallery app are top notch. Pixel falls behind with things such as smooth scrubbing through a video, or letting you scrub frame by frame. And edits to images can only be saved as a separate file, with an obvious quality loss when zoomed in. This is an area Google really needs to improve on. And now, here's an update to the Pixel 6 Pro, now running the latest quarterly beta. The compass is dreadful. It always says low accuracy, and I have to do the stupid figure of 8 dance, or scan my surroundings with the camera. As mentioned previously, Snapchat got some Pixel 6 Pro further enhancements. While I believe the focus mode was there before, the night mode is new. It lowers the frame rate and bumps up the noise, however the brightness of the video is just fantastic. I didn't realise that the Pixel camera app doesn't have a real burst mode, which is annoying. I mean, the amount of times I've used burst mode is almost never. But it's nice to have, so it's a shame that, as far as I'm aware, there is no way to enable it. Quickshot doesn't record in full resolution, and you can't pick any frame you want, it's just the ones that Google thinks you might want. So it's not a good replacement, even though I ultimately use Quickshot more for quick videos. In terms of this new beta, the standby time seems a bit worse, back to how it was before the final beta of 12L. I've also had problems with phone calls randomly dropping, but I still can't figure out if it's a Pixel problem or a free problem, as I barely get 4G where I live, on both the Pixel and the iPhone. So overall, that's my thoughts and opinions on Android 12, and an update one and a half months into owning the Pixel 6 Pro. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one!